Hello and welcome to the Plexus LE training session related to the specification of groundwater hydraulic material properties. My name is Marina Trevisoli and I'll be presenting this training for you. In this presentation, we will be examining the material manager dialog in the groundwater module of the Plexus LE software. We will further discuss inputting both saturated and unsaturated soil hydraulic properties as well as importing material properties from the Soil Vision database or from another C-Page model. We will also look at advanced functionalities in the software in order to use material properties to provide quality assurance that unsaturated C-Page models are being properly solved. The governing partial differential equation for Solvian saturated transient flow involves the specification of both the coefficient of permeability which is also called the hydraulic conductivity, as well as the water storage function in the material. In a steady state model, there is no change in storage over time, and the right hand side of this equation is set equal to zero. Therefore, the water storage function, or the soil water characteristic curve, is not required for a steady state analysis. In a transient state model, the storage can change over time and the specification of both the coefficient of permeability and the function of soil suction, as well as the water storage in terms of the soil water characteristic curve, must be specified. The materials managed dialog is used to enter any soils that can be assigned to regions in the model. Not all materials are required to be assigned to a region. A single material can also be assigned to multiple regions. A new material can be selected to create either a saturated or an unsaturated material for the model. Under each material, the user can enter the storage function and the hydraulic conductivity in either saturated or fully unsaturated terms. User input is simplified for saturated soils, which exist only beneath the water table. The user must enter a specific gravity of the soil sample, as well as a saturated volumetric water content. For a saturated soil, the user must only enter a saturated hydraulic conductivity. This parameter is typically measured in the field or the lab and entered in the software. There are also options to estimate the saturated hydraulic conductivity based on simpler grain size parameters such as D10 and D60. It is also possible to enter the compressibility of the saturated soil in the positive pore water pressure zone. The formulation for a seepage model is inherently built to not consider volume change. Therefore, this parameter should be used with caution. The parameter may be found on the advanced options and it defines the slope of the change in volumetric water content versus a change in pore water pressure in the region of positive pore water pressure. Typical values for different materials types are shown in the right-hand table. It is also possible for the software to consider the effects of an isotropic flow along different coordinate axes. This type of feature is useful for materials that may have been deposited or compacted, such that one direction has a higher hydraulic conductivity than the other direction. A typical use case of this would be where a layer of clay has been compacted, and therefore flow laterally is easier than vertical flow. Anisotropy can also be applied in 3D with the specification of two anisotropic axes. With unsaturated soils, the volumetric water content becomes a function of soil suction. Therefore, a soil water characteristic curve must be specified, which relates to the volumetric water content as suction increases. A number of common fitting equations are provided in order to model the change. It is also recommended that the user uses experimental data, as the nonce moves behavior can lead to erratic results. The Fredland and Ching fit provides the best estimate at high sanctions. It is also worth noting that bimodal behavior can be represented in the soil. It is often helpful for the user to graph the soil water characteristic curve in order to confirm the behavior as suction changes. 
Clicking on the graph SWCC button results in a graph being displayed with the selected unities. Laboratory data will be interpreted on an arithmetic scale, but the graphing will be plotted on logarithmic scale. In this graph, both the experimental laboratory data as well as the curve feed data will be plotted. It is also possible in the software to estimate the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity of a soil. This parameter is difficult and expensive to measure in the laboratory and therefore estimations are commonly used in the numerical modeling process. Saturated hydraulic conductivity is typically input based on the field or laboratory measurements and the unsaturated portion of the hydraulic conductivity curve can be estimated based on both the saturated hydraulic conductivity and the soil water characteristic curve. It is recommended that the minimum hydraulic conductivity of any curve should be greater than the vapor conductivity. A number of unsaturated prediction methods are provided in the software for the user to utilize. It is helpful to graph the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity and to confirm the performance. It should be noted that a sharp drop or multiply orders of magnitude in a small changing suction can lead to numerical instability. If numerical instability occurs, then the user should make the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity curve flatter and then slowly increase the steppness using model staging to achieve satisfactory results. It is also possible to import soil properties from other numerical models or from the Soil Vision database. The user interface is provided in order to expedite the searching process to identify unsaturated laboratory data to pull from the Soil Vision database. Relevant or similar materials can be selected based on classification, grain size properties, or the type of data and amount of data that is available. This functionality is useful to identify soils that might be similar to the soils at a present site. It is a common issue that the fun element process may have difficulty following unsaturated nonlinear hydraulic property curves in certain cases. The software provides functionality to graph all the nodes of the finite element process on top of the original material properties curve in order to confirm a proper solution. This functionality is found under the graphs, verification, material properties graph data menu option. If the partial differential equation has been solved correctly, then all points should plot directly on the soil water characteristic curve and the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity curve. If points plot off of either of these curves, then the user should reduce the limit and resolve the finite element equation. So in summary, each material can be applied for several different regions. Each region can have only one material. In a steady state numerical model, it is only required that the user enter hydraulic conductivity. The only use for entering a soil water characteristic curve is to plot the volumetric water content at any point in the model. In a transient model, both a soil water characteristic curve and hydraulic conductivity information must be defined. And isotropy can be modeled in 2D and 3D. Material properties can be imported from other numerical models or from the Soil Vision database. And lastly, graphing definite element data over original material properties provides a level of assurance that the nonlinear partial differential equations are being properly solved. Thank you for your attention.